The woman who stole America's atomic bomb secrets Elizabeth Zerabina. Elizabeth Zerabina ran one of the successful spy networks to get information on the USA's secret nuclear program to USSR. A fast food restaurant in Albuquerque, in the USA, had some customers. They savored on the restaurant's menu. When they left a tip, they also left a package for someone. The package was picked up by a courier. The box contained documents that were the most confidential data ever to exist. The papers are US data on its secret nuclear program or commonly called as the Manhattan Project. Soviet spies set up moles in the Manhattan Project to receive information on the progress of the operation. One woman was responsible for the success of the espionage operation Elizabeth Verabina. Early life and career. Born in Ukraine to a Jewish family Zerabina was talented in many languages, a key to become a spy. Zerabina formed a large spy network in Poland before World War II with the help of the Communist Party. Zerabina's first major assignment was to track a rogue Soviet spy in Turkey. Yakov Blumkin was an illegal resident of the Soviet spy agency in Turkey. As a Jew, he had access to Hebrew manuscripts that he sold illegally to museums and made money from the sale. In Turkey, he came in contact with Leon Trotsky, who had a split with Stalin. Blumkin and Trotsky developed a friendship that was not liked by the Soviet spy agency. Zerbina got an assignment to befriend Blumkin and get information on his friendship with Trotsky. Zerabina and Blumkin started an affair that ended with Blumkin's arrest. Blumkin, at the time of arrest, said Zerabina, you have betrayed me. Blumkin faced death for treason. The Soviet government was aware of the USA's scientific advancements and wanted to penetrate the country's bright minds. In 1932 Zerabina went on a trip to the USA to establish contacts. She moved with communist sympathizers in high ranks and formed a network. She also made initial seed for future friendship like a help she did to Robert Oppenheimer's wife. Oppenheimer will lead the Manhattan Project in the future. Back in Europe, Zerabina helped many Jews to escape from Europe to the USA when the Nazi party came to power in Germany. The people she helped will become moles for her in the USA. She married Vasily Zerabina, a Soviet diplomat, and the couple had a son. Zerabina had a brief stay in Paris, Copenhagen. The Manhattan Project In 1941 the couples were assigned to an important mission to spy on U.S. scientists. After a short letter from Einstein, U.S. President Franklin D. Roosevelt set up a committee to explore options for nuclear energy under the banner of the Uranium Advisory Committee in August 1941. Zerabina, once in the USA, rekindled her connections. Her connections ran so deep that she had connections with Einstein's mistress Koninkoff. Koninkoff worked with Zerabina and leaked Einstein's idea to the Soviet spy agency. In September 1942, the Uranium Advisory Committee was converted into Operation Enormous and then to Manhattan Project. The U.S. military took up the project. The scientific chief of the project was Robert Oppenheimer. Robert Oppenheimer, a lean figure, was a bright mind right from school. Oppenheimer had sympathized with communism in the 1930s, but was not completely attached to the idea. Oppenheimer set out on a mission to find the ideal location for the Manhattan Project and settled on a boys' school in the remote Los Alamos, New Mexico. Oppenheimer recruited his team members from various fields who were subjected to military background verification before admitted into the project. The Manhattan Project was a hot pot of top scientists from across the USA. The clash between military officials and civilian scientists was seen common at the start of the project. Still, Oppenheimer resolved it from time to time. Spy Operations The Soviet spy organization, which oversaw the Manhattan Project's buzzing activities, was interested to know what went on inside it. Even Oppenheimer was approached by Soviet spies indirectly, 
but he refused to collaborate with them. Zurabina, along with her team, came in contact with Klaus Fuchs. Klaus Fuchs was a crucial member of the Manhattan Project as he worked for the core team. Fuchs has made the calculations to calculate the critical mass needed for a nuclear fission reaction to start a chain reaction and experimented on it. Nuclear fission reaction occurred when a neutron is accelerated to hit an atom. The neutron splits it into two atoms, releases energy, and some neutrons in the process. The escaping neutrons will hit other atoms causing a chain reaction. Zerbina set up fast food restaurants in Albuquerque in Santa Fe, which was close to Los Alamos. Fuchs would drop off documents in the restaurants which were picked up by the Soviet agents. Morris Cohen and his wife Lona Cohen headed the operations. The Cohen couples would take the documents on a train to Washington. From there, it reached USSR via diplomatic courier. Theodore Hall, who was involved in the Fat Boy atom bombs design, also leaked information to the Soviet agents. Zurabina, at the peak of the operations, handled at least 18 agents. The moles of Zurabina helped Soviet scientists verify their observations and speed up their nuclear program. FBI sensed the leak and started to tighten the security around the Manhattan Project, which led to reduced communication between the moles and Soviet spies. Zurabina and her husband Vasily returned to Moscow and got arrested on charges that they also spied for Germany. After six months of interrogation, they were proved innocent. Aftermath The USSR government awarded Zurabina the Order of Red Star for her contribution to obtain information on the US nuclear program. Fuchs faced trial, and his British citizenship got revoked. He then moved to East Germany and continued his academics job. Theodore Hall's name came out only in 1990 due to declassified files released by the FBI. Zurabina died in 1972 in a mysterious way when she fell off a bus. The scientists who leaked the information to USSR insist that they were working for humanity. The atomic spies and traitors argument was that if the USA alone had nuclear weapons, it would have become an oppressive global empire and launched World War III. With the USSR also an atomic power world was in relative peace after World War II.